Hi, welcome back. Well, as you can see, the canvas has been transformed and I've gone ahead and I've finished all the skin tones back at the studio. And bar a few details, that portion's pretty well done. So now I'm going to come back in today and I'm going to put the colours of the dress and the background and then maybe come back in and put a few more highlights on the hair. Um, so I've got a little bit more freedom now as far as colouring and brush strokes and being somewhat more careful. Um, so anyway, I'll get started. Basically I've got a palette of pinks and reds here for the dress. Um, as you can see she's got the uh, sleeveless dresses to show them great. She's got some She's got some guns for arms, so, I mean, as you can see, she works out, and apparently they say she works out like a gladiator, so I tell you, you don't want to mess with Michelle Obama. But uh, I'll come in here and I'll just start dabbing some colour around, and for me, the hardest part's always getting started, you know, where do you, where do you start? So just start putting some colour on just to sort of loosen up a little bit. And being in dress, I'm not going to come in here and copy every single crease on this picture. It just wouldn't make sense. If I wanted to copy everything that was on this picture, I'd probably be a raging lunatic and uh, drive myself nuts every time. But basically, I see the main light areas coming from here, and that's what I want to pick up on. Basically, get highlights on the shoulders. Highlight them, a little bit of a highlight in here. Over here as well. And then you sort of graduate the colours out from there. And, of course, underneath here, of course, you've got the darker shadows. So fairly straightforward, but then again, it's different when you put the canvas in front of you and you've got to do it. Um, you want to be sort of spontaneous, but then again, careful as well, because you don't want to turn into a big pile of mud. And usually that's what happens when you start working the paint too much. So basically you've got some highlight areas coming out from the Underneath, we've got the creases. We've got some creases coming out here. I went ahead and did the hands back in the studio because actually, for me, I always find hands tough because they've got, you've got multiple round portions like the fingers are round and you have to make them all look round so you've got all the different fingers to take care of. Um, so I always found hands a little bit tougher. So to be able to fit the portrait into the time I just went ahead and did that. This portrait here is I think the size of this one is about 18 by 24 it's a little bit smaller than the one I did of her husband, President Obama. Back in uh, January, I was at a s local school, um, Oakland Terrace, where I did a eight foot by four foot canvas, which took me about five weeks total. And I did, I did it in front of the, uh, the kids there. And I had a scaffold actually set up to do that one. It was uh, it was quite a project. Half the time was just making sure I didn't fall off the scaffold because I kept wanting to step back to look at the picture. And there were a few close calls there. I just forgot about that and um, actually fell backwards off the, off the stool. And luckily there was a couple of kids there to sort of help me clean up after I'd spilt the paint all over the stage. But, um, but it worked out pretty good and we actually had a big um, unveiling, a uh, local Congressman Chris Van Hollen came by and unveiled it and we had a, a um, sort of a dedication ceremony there and 
had local, some local and also international news media there to see it. And I also got to be interviewed on the Today Show in Australia, which, was, uh, which went countrywide back in my own country, which was, which was fun because uh, because of the time difference, my family all got up at all hours of the morning to watch it, and uh, they um, they made sure I, I made sure was uh, my hair was combed that day, and uh, but they always seem to pick something out on me that's that's out, but uh, but yeah, no, it was quite an experience doing that portrait, and uh, it was a commissioned piece that was going to be given as a gift to the White House, so. That's still pending. But as you can see, I'm sort of blocking in a bit of colour here. Some creases. Under here is sort of a shadow. And with shadows, it's kind of tough because you want to... Photos always have hard lines where shadows meet the light. And in paintings, you don't want that. You don't want hard lines. You want to sort of blend it out a little bit come in and graduate those shadows out a little bit. It looks a lot more realistic as a painting, that is. So what works in a photo just doesn't work in a painting. And you've got to sort of interpret that. That's, that's been my battle for years. And oftentimes I catch myself getting caught up in the photo too much. I'll have to readjust my thinking a little bit. As you can see, it's just uh, preliminary stages there. Put some... And creases are kind of tough because you want... You've got the dark portion of the crease, which is a, a deep part of the crease in here, and you want to sort of graduate that out into the lighter colour so it looks like it's bending. And it's not just a, you know, just a crack sort of thing in the dress. As you can see, it's sort of that nice bit of a highlight there, and it sort of looks like a, a crease. A little bit of a shadowed side over here where her, her hair is casting a shadow. Put a little bit of blue, even though that's not in the photo, it just sort of brings a bit of the outside skylight into that picture. Then I'll put a little bit of a highlight against that, graduate that out, and that's how you create a nice little shadow. And I'm not using a lot of colours, basically a bit of alizarin crimson, some brilliant rose pink, and a bit of um, Van Dyke brown actually, which is you wouldn't think would go with pink. just took a number of years to figure out what works as far as colour combinations. And I haven't even cleaned my brush yet, which is, you know, pretty cool, because I've, I've just sort of, I'll even paint where I don't even mix the colours properly. I'll just let them mix right on the canvas in front of me. And sometimes you get some pretty cool effects with that. Like in here. It's coming out quite well. Highlight in there. I'm going to clean the brush off a little bit. It's getting a little bit dry. Now, as far as the background goes, you want to keep it fairly neutral. So, I'm going to come in here for a little bit of a light brown mixed with a bit of ochre. Maybe redden it up a little bit. And basically, you don't want to go too harsh on the on the background colours. You just want it to be complementary. Um, there we go, that's a nice sort of a reddish yellow there. And see, I've purposely left the hair undone. I'll come back in and I'll finish it later by putting the hair highlights on there. And a the good thing about painting is, is you can put whatever colour you want. If you see, she's got basically a, a a light skin tone there on this side and I don't want it to clash with the background colour so you can always change up the colour 
in the background. Even put a little bit of blue in there. 